हेलो लर्नर्स वेलकम वंस अगेन फॉर अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक विच टॉक्स अबाउट गवर्नेंस ई गवर्नेंस एंड राधर वी कैन से द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक गवर्नेंस आई थिंक वी ऑल हैव हर्ड अबाउट द टर्म कॉल्ड ई गवर्नेंस इन अवर इन अवर डे टू डे एक्टिविटी वी सी दैट हाउ द गवर्नमेंट यूज टू फंक्शन हाउ द गवर्नमेंट यूज टू एग्जीक्यूट बट वेन एग्जैक्टली यू नो वी यूज टू टॉक अबाउट ई गवर्नेंस आई थिंक दे इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट बिकॉज वी आर मूविंग फ्रॉम conventional mode to online mode and government is also changing themselves we have seen in our preceding sessions that how the commerce is replaced by e-commerce but now what we observe that governance is also very important and uh, if you want to reach to the people who are unreached i think the role of online is quite uh, quite important and it's matter a lot so taking into consideration that today discussion you know talks more about the e-governance and we see that how this governance how this electronic governance is making the things ease of doing and helpful to government to reach to the unreach so if we talk about you know the present session what we are going to cover in this session that is talking about the rationale behind the e governance operating principles delivery mechanism output impact and outcomes this is more important because what mechanism what pedagogy what modus operandi you know the the government is following in order to connect with their citizens with their with their country people i think mechanism is very important because the country like india which is hugely populated and uh, and uh, you know the people are blended in nature they are in rural areas they are in urban areas they are in they are in the suburb suburbs so what exactly important is that what mechanism you are going to make what you know the rocket science uh, the government is going to develop so that we are in touch with the customers and facilitate them so prior to going into the depth of this uh, this e governance i think i am going to talk what exactly uh, the e governance is so e governance simply defined is leveraging ict solutions for transforming the reach and quality of the government services delivery to citizens it is being increasingly viewed as an enabler and facilitator of good governance we are going to talk more about you know the good governance in a in a in a separate session in a more elaborative manner and we will dedicatedly talk about that what exactly you know the good governance means because there is a term called good governance and there is a term called bad governance so good governance is something which is which is no doubt you know combination of of the conventional approach which we usually call the governance and the e governance but uh, end of the day what matter is that how you are going to serve the serve the citizens of your country in a more appropriate manner so aim of e governance is to improve the quality cost accessibility and speed of delivering government information and services so this is more important and you know how much we are accessible so make government more accountable and accountability is is there by increasing the opportunity for citizen participation in the governance process we have seen that you know there was a time when people have to uh, go for uh, huge queue and to to get their work done either it could be you know the license or you know making of the aadhar card or you know making some amendments in the aadhar card you know the passport seva and lot of you know other activity which is which the government used to run but right now you find out that majority of things are are available online you just go to the portal of mygov.in and then you know you can fill the information and your voter id your aadhar card your pan card or you know your passport your driving license or whatever you know the services government used to do uh, like pension yojana or you know some some uh, in the in this pandemic stage you know the government is giving you know the those who have uh, passed away due to covid they are the the handsome amount or you know the lump sum amount is given so all those things are you know going to be governed through through online mode so what i mean to say that uh, this is a beauty of the e governance and e governance is gaining considerable momentum in india with several high impact projects being implemented in both government to citizens which we usually call g2c and government to business which we usually call g2b domains across central ministries and state departments so what i mean to say that in our coming discussion you know we will talk about the various ways of of you know the model the government is going to do that is government to citizens government to business and then so electronic governance or e governance is the application of it 
for delivering government services exchange of information communication transaction integration of various stand alone systems between government to citizens government to business government to government government to employees and there are certain you know things which which the government to government used to do like the central government have certain schemes which which you know need to be routed through state government so so now the interaction is between the government to government that the central government you know pass on the the certain schemes to the state government and then state governments are the driving force behind interaction with the citizens of that particular state so this is a, a deal between the government to government model so government to employees also there where central government employees are there the the facility they used to take or you know the things which are there so as well as back office process and interaction with the entire government framework so through e governance government systems are made available to citizens in a convenient efficient and transparent manner the three main target groups that can be distinguished in government concepts are government citizens and interest group or the businesses so what we have observed that when the government used to govern any thing when the government used to develop any scheme for the citizens i think sometimes they directly go to the citizens and do that and sometimes they have a model called ppp model that is public private partnership model so when the interest group either it could be the non government organizations or you know the self help groups or you know the cooperative societies or you know the charitable organizations so all are you know interrelated and uh, you know do the things with that model so in governments there are no district boundaries finance and support so what is the difference between e government and e governance that need to be taken care by e government we mean the use of ict in government operations as a tool to increase the outreach of the government services to general public e governments on the other hand implies the use of ict in transforming and supporting functions and structures of the system so that is more important because with the help of technology we are going to transform distinction from e government although the two terms are often used interchangeably there is a difference between e governance and e government e government refers to the use of the ict in public administration which when combined with organizational change and new skills are intended to improve public services and democratic process and to strengthen support to the public however e government has no provision for governance of ict the governance of ict typically requires a substantial increase in regulation and policy making capabilities as well as additional expertise and opinion shaping process among various social stakeholders the perspective of e governance is the use of technologies that both help to govern and have to be governed i think this is a usp behind the e governance is that technology is very important ingredient is a very important aspect because it's not only facilitate the government to do but sometimes you know try to recapitulate that where the government is lacking and in which domain they have to work more so central government of e government governance is to reach the beneficiary and to ensure that their services needs are met ideally the government will automatically recognize the importance of achieving this goal in order to maximize its efficiency furthermore e government uses one way communication protocol whereas e governance uses two way communication protocol that is a very good important aspect establishing the identity of the end beneficiary is a challenge in all citizen centric services statistically information published by government and global bodies do not always reveal the fact so the best form of e governance cuts down on the unwanted interference of too many layers while delivering governmental services so that is very true and when you know the government is generating any any project any you know things in a electronic mode in a online mode somewhere the intermediaries are going to be cut short or narrowed down so that the the project can directly go to the the citizens like there are certain schemes which are available and if if you know the citizens of the country uh, fill the information or you know furnish all the information i think the 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 layers like you know if the schemes are related to particular village the pradhan have got a very limited role and they work as a aggregator they work as a enabler rather than sometimes what happen they are the disbursement officer but in that case they are just the 
aggregator or enabler and and the final amount you know delivered through dbt mode that is direct bank transfer on their bank account so it depends on good infrastructure setup with the support of local process and parameters for government to reach their citizens or end beneficiaries a budget for planning development and growth can be derived from well laid e governance system so the relevance of of business intelligence or you know the artificial intelligence or the bi analytics has brought forth the paradigm shift in assimilating and visualizing huge chunks of data in near real time manner so the pivot of all good decision making system is correct up to date and compliant data governments not only want the transformation of their country and countrymen but also expect improved relations and healthy trade across the world so development should be transformative and continuously evolving internal as well as external it system should work in tandem with government policies and procedures data analytics has the ability to change the color and complexion of the world e governance should induce up to date information initiate effective interaction and engage with transparent transactions in compliance with rule of law thus enabling a sustainable transformational model so what are the challenges of e governance i think unawareness is a major challenge in the implementation of e governance project and no doubt the cost is a very important aspect in developing countries like india cost is one of the most important obstacles in the path of implementation of e governance where major part of the population is living below the poverty line i think that is somewhere because they are not you know connected with the digital device they are not connected with the internet so somewhere the issue is is very important so technology will play a critical role to create the india of tomorrow technology is changing at a rapid pace velocity of change has increased predictability of change has decreased so technology for growth if we talk about i think enabling india as they become global enterprise creating jobs helping smes grow and stay competitive technology technology powering expansion of banking footprint and financial inclusion so technology for government if we talk about i think e enabling citizen services online by default government e transaction grew from 2.41 billion in the in the in the in the preceding years to you know 5 to 6 billion in the coming year so aadhar india unique id biometric platform scaled to more than more than um, what we can say um, uh, 100 crore people and technology enabling dissemination for both citizens and business and technology for good if you talk about technology driving social impact and inclusion enabling remote healthcare empowering farmers digital literacy and skill development so if we if we talk about you know the operating principles i think governance stands for inclusive governance which seeks to embrace rather than exclude individuals people and sectors in running government and if we talk about informative openness which demonstrates that information is power and truly empowering when placed at the hand of the citizens interactive engagement if we talk about which puts premium on information exchange through continuing dialogue between authority and constituency innovative management if we talk about which is committed to a culture of excellence sustained by creativity and innovation so electronic governance or e governance can be defined as a use of information and communication technology by the government to provide and facilitate government services exchange of information communication transaction and integration of various stand alone systems and services so what are the four pillars of e governance so in a developing country like india success of e governance largely depends upon political stability public support and central coordination amongst various department so governments are connectivity content capacity and capital so if you if you see this government development cycle i think we have to see that how do we know if we have been successful and key performance indicators are regularly monitored and when we talk about where are we now government self review of current governance practices and when we talk about how will we get there institutional govern governance guidelines how good governance is implemented and where are we going that is governance development plan that is clear goals objectives so this is a gov- governance development cycle and and there is a difference between gov- governance and management so if we talk about i think the governance emphasize more on the setting the norms strategic vision and direction and formulate high level goals and policies 
whereas management run the organization in line with the broad goals and direction set by the governing body. If we talk about the governance, oversee management and organizational performance to ensure that the organization is working in the best interest of the stakeholders and more specifically the members who are served by the organization mission. And if you see in management perspective, implementation, the decision within the context of the mission and strategic mission, make operational decisions and policies, keep the governance body informed and educated. So, governance, if you talk more about direct and oversee the management to ensure the organization is achieving the desired outcomes and to ensure that the organization is acting prudently, ethically and legally and be responsive, responsive to requests for additional information. Now, there is a great purpose of e-governance. E-governance expands to electronic governance, is the integration of ICT in all the purpose process with the aim of enhancing government ability to address the needs of the general public. The basic purpose of e-governance is to simply process for all that is government, citizens, business at national, state and local levels. Promote good governance. It connotes the implementation of information technology in the government process and function so as to cause simple, moral, accountable and transparent governments. To provide access to government services, dissemination of information, communication in a quick and efficient manner. So, what is e-governance? How it has to be realized, the vision of e-governance? The NEGP aims at improving delivery of government services to citizen and business with the following vision, make all government services accessible to the common man in his locality through common service delivery outlets and ensure efficiency, transparency and reliability of such services at affordable cost to delivery mechanism. So, what we have seen that when we talk about the delivery mechanism, I think analog or paper based tools are there that is performance, pledges, citizen board, media network, Digital of ICT media, that is, if we talk about initiatives through the city website, ICT network access improvement, that is, cyber schools, cyber barangays. So, M governance, if we talk about which is one step ahead to that, and talking more about the mobile governance, because the whole world is right now, you know, equipped with the smartphones. And when you talk about the smartphone, I think you can very easily, you know, do the governance through the, through the mobile manner. So, e governance is the use of information technology when an internet by government agencies to make G2C services available at citizens doorstep. M governance is not a replacement for E governance, rather it complements E governance. So M governance on the other hand is the use of mobile or wireless technologies like cellular phones, laptops, tablets and PDAs with wireless internet connection to improve government services and strengthen people reach anytime, anywhere. So, if we talk about M governance adoption, I think uh, M communication, which is G to C to G, M services, transaction and payment, M administration and then M democracy. So these are the new terminologies which are coming up and which is just a, you know, the new philosophy uh, taking into consideration the legacy approach what we have. So M communication, if you talk about mobile device provide an important access channel for government to reach citizens. Citizens can subscribe to SMS, oblique email alerts for various e-services, renewal of road tax, passport renewal notification, code setting, license renewal, exam results, security threat alerts, and emergency broadcast. So we have we have seen that when we are going for a for a toll tax or when we are you know moving from one state to another state, the our our car is equipped with the fast tag uh, stickers, and these fast tag stickers automatically you know you debit the amount the moment you cross the toll so this is one of the very good example which is coming up and you see that in the coming years things are could be quite ease of doing and so the, it is going to save the time of the of the citizens and the, you know the the passengers or you know the travelers who are moving from toll so a lot of changes you will find out in the coming years and this is just a very good example of electronic governance so sms is an effective channel for citizens to communicate with government. Citizens can text their representatives to comment and complain about government officials and services. So,
एम एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इफ यू टॉक अबाउट आई थिंक दे आर वेरियस यू नो सेगमेंट वेयर दिस एम एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इज इज पुटिंग इट्स वेयर बूट्स लाइक हेल्थ मॉनिटरिंग प्रोग्रेस टेली मेडिसिन इरीगेशन वाटर रिसोर्सेज कैप्चरिंग रिजर्व वॉर स्टोरेज मॉनिटरिंग रिलीज ऑफ वाटर थ्रू स्लूसाइज मॉनिटरिंग माइनर्स एंड सम माइनर्स अंडर अ गिवन कैनल इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बोर्ड सिटीजन ग्रीवियंसेज बिल कलेक्शन पब्लिक वर्क मॉनिटरिंग सो सम मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन ई गवर्नेंस इज फूड एंड सिविल सप्लाईज लाइक ट्रैकिंग लॉरी मूवमेंट एंड स्टॉक एंड वेयर हाउसेज रिजर्व वॉयल लेवल्स मॉनिटरिंग ग्रीवियंस रिड्रेस गार्बेज डम्प रिमूवल्स एस एम एस अ वाटर टैंकर टिकट बुकिंग एग्जामिनेशन रिजल्ट एंड इन एग्रीकल्चर वेदर रिपोर्ट्स मार्केट प्राइसेज सीड अवेलेबिलिटी सो दिस इज द यू नो द थिंग विच इज गोइंग ऑन एंड इफ यू go more into the depth of this electronic governance you you find out that a lot of initiatives are coming from the government of this country or indian government we used to say and you find out that ease of doing is is coming and there are certain examples like the passport seva which can transform the public sector services and there are certain challenges which we was there with the ministry of external affairs uh, and then government is there and then how the country is there so you see if you if you talk about the challenge i think growing demand of passports in related services including tier 2 and three cities need for robust governance process large regional spread with involvement of local authorities goal to eliminate large number of middlemen involved in this process large process reengineering required without disrupting the routine process flow and what was the solution come out that public private partnership on indian e government passport seva project had come up they have tied up with the tata consultancy services and then key services include migration of legacy records redesign of passport centers and implementation of straight through processing mobile application launched with an online payment system central passport print facility integration with external stakeholders police indian post and other so impact was that technology led transformation of passport services innovative risk shared and 77 passport centers rolled out with with 13 million passport issued and 19000 plus calls handled daily through contact centers supporting 17 languages so reduction in passport delivery times to for four days for urgent and 45 days for regular so this was the the achievement the government had achieved with this e governance with this you know the passport seva transferring model and it's not that you know it was in in passport only integrated emergency response and management for timely emergency care i think this is one of the sector where uh, the e governance is is uh, really playing a very important role and it's having a great importance the challenge was lack of adequate emergency response healthcare infrastructures delay in access to timely care resulting in high casualties low number of healthcare facilities and poor ambulatory facilities delay in emergency care leading to loss of lives and solution was end to end emergency management solution single number 108 for timely emergency medical support and care was generated integrated emergency management solution combining state of the art technologies multilingual contact centers e patients fleet management system was was developed and then impact was that over 750 plus million population covered and 23000 plus emergency attended daily and this is you know a data which can be changed with the change of time you will find out that rapid emergency response had come up in 160 seconds to dispatch ambulance call pick up within three rings and 18 minutes to reach site so this is which is there and the good part is that in uh, that lot of you know the public private partnership model is coming up and when we talk about you know processing of management of tax returns or income tax returns we usually called there also they had tied up with infosys in a, in a public private partnership mode and ministry of finance is uh, is you know is governing this and the challenge is aspiration to create a comprehensive automated and online system for tds reconciliation analysis and correction enabling high complex and vast scope and encompassing a wide range of activities low productivity and efficiency of current current return processing systems and when you talk about you know the solution web based tds reconciliation analysis and correction enabling system traces are there enabled complete reconciliation of collection and claim of tax reduction at source solution supports 
end to end any time anywhere access complete ownership of training and knowledge management solution and this supports identification of non core activities for outsourcing so impact was that more than 95% itr process within no tds mismatch within 3 days of receipts of tds more than 250 million digital tds certificates downloaded from the past financial year substantial reduction in processing time from 1 year to 3 days and 100% growth in the revenue from from the current assessment year so what i mean to say that the data is maybe changing i think maybe in the beginning stage you find out that challenge was something that solution is this and impact was this so it's not like that there are certain domains where the government is coming up the ppp model is now going to apply in various aspect because the population of india is is very gigantic in in huge numbers so how they are going to connect with the with the citizens with the citizen centric services i think somewhere they have to do that so you see that uh, delivery of uh, like government of madhya pradesh also they provide a one stop shop solutions and ultimately what happened lot of you know the chaos kind of other issues had been as also so now the thing is that we have talked a lot about you know the various aspect the citizen charter is also quite important which can work as a ready reckoner or you know the guide book on the key services being delivered by the city government to its customers like procedures response time personal responsible for e services requirement checklist to facilitate services delivery schedule of fee location maps a contract that can be enforced through feedback provides for customer feedback from directory of city all agencies so government to citizen if you talk about the goal of government to citizen which we usually call g2c e governance is to offer a variety of ict services to citizens in an efficient and economical manner and to strengthen the relationship between government and citizens using technology so there are several methods of g2c e governments two way communication allow citizens to instant message directly with public administrators and cast remote electronic votes and instant opening voting so these are the examples of e participation other examples included the payment of taxes and services that can be completed online or over the phone mundane services such as name or address changes applying for services or grants or transferring existing services are more convenient and no longer have to be completed face to face so if you talk about implementation approach i think a lot of you know the model which is coming up we have talked about you know the how the tax uh, you know the income tax returns or we talk about the passport seva or we talk about the variety of ways other services are going to be done through through uid portal so on there is another way of uh, implementation approach that is e praman seva which had been started by by the government which talks about the framework specification and guidelines e pramal as services e pramal as pluggable authentication component so what was the intention the intention is very clear that anti management authentication credential registration single sign on website authentication and fraud management so if you see the pedagogy how it works we have seen that e pramal authentication as a service uidai which is a driving force behind you know uh, giving the services of aadhar then passport then income tax which we called as a e pramal identity provider and you see that if you see the image you find out identity repositories are there and then uh, you know verify users then login and then uh, saml request is there then avail services and finally you see the service provider so this is a chain which is linked with with all those things where left side you have a e pramal identity provider then service provider and finally the user is at the bottom so what exactly you know we have we have extract from this that level 1 talks about the username and level 2 talks about certain framework and then you see how the aadhar authentication ecosystem is going to be interlinked so e pramal value proposition if you talk about shared infrastructure for e authentication needs easy onboarding minimal change at the application level of department saving cost time and other resources value addition to aadhar authentication obviates the need of department being aua provide asa services centralized aua oblique asa services pki digital signature based authentication also included single sign on authentication even for mobile based delivery of services and fraud management so this is something so when you talk about government to employees i think 
governments to employee partnership is one of the main primary interaction interaction the delivery model of e-governments it is a relationship between online tools sources and articles that help employees to maintain the communication with the government and their own companies e-governments relationship with employees allows new learning technology in one simple place as the as the computer documents can now be stored and shared with other colleagues online and e-governance make it possible for employees to become paperless and makes it easier for employees to send important documents back and forth to colleagues all over the world instead of having to print out these records of facts so g2e services also include software for maintaining personal information and records of employees some of the benefits of g2e expansion include e payroll maintaining the online sources to view paychecks pay stubs pay bills and keep records for tax information e benefits be able to look up what benefits an employee is receiving and what benefits they have to write to and e training allows for new and current employees to regularly maintain the training they have through the development of new technology and to allow new employees to train and learn over new materials in one convenient location so e learning is another way to keep employees informed on the important materials they need to know through the use of visuals animation videos it is usually a computer based learning tool although not always so it is also a way for employees to learn at their own pace distance learning although it can be instructor led so maintaining records of personal information and g2 is an effective way to provide e learning to the employees bring them together and to promote knowledge sharing among them it also gives employees the possibility of accessing information in regard to compensation and benefit policies training and learning opportunities and civil rights laws g2e services also include software for maintaining personal information and records of employees so g2e is is adopted by many countries which includes united states hong kong and new zealand and india is also doing a great job in this direction so there are certain challenges which are in international position e governance is facing numerous challenges world over the traditional approach for introducing e governance is, no, is just not sufficient due to the complexity from wide variety of applications architecture mix for both legacy and modern words that need to be brought into the purview of e governance these challenges are arising from administrative legal institutional and technological factors the challenge includes security drawbacks such as spoofing tampering repudiation disclosure elevation of privilege denial of services and other cyber crimes other sets of problem include implementation parts such as funding management of change privacy authentication delivery of services standardization technology issues and use of local language now i think we have very elaborately talk about the e governance i think when we talk about e commerce we have to take into consideration i have already talked in my preceding session that e commerce is nothing but you know combination of lot of electronic activity it's not just merely you know buying and selling of goods it could be you know the it could be governance which we have discussed very elaborately today and it could be you know the education it could be you know the teaching it could be the learning it could be the electronic services it could be e health so in our in our session in our coming sessions you know we are going to talk more about what exactly you know the e-commerce is and e-commerce is not merely commerce but talking more about you know ease of doing talking how best we can serve our client our customer our our students when we talk about education and we talk about you know the governance or when we talk about you know our citizens i think the governance is very important so good governance is all about belief and commitment systematic approach leadership and synergy good governance is key element of the credibility and it's critical for its ability to attract and serve members so if good governance is a priority resource need to be allocated i think somewhere you know the government can win the battle so it is a very routine affair it's a it's a it's a long term affair it's not like that that you can you know execute the thing at one juncture and then you can stop it it's a it's a process which can go on in a in a routine manner in a day to day manner so sometimes you know whatever we have done it today become obsolete tomorrow but it's not like that we should stop working so we have to be gradually in touch because because a lot of changes are coming up we are moving from contemporary way we are moving from you know conventional way to contemporary mode and there a lot of revamping is coming up so 
So when you talk about good governance, when you talk about electronic governance, it encourages the take up of digital technologies that are crucial to economic competitiveness. It allows government to re redefine its role and become more citizen focused. It enables us to join up information and hence govern more effectively and it can reduce the cost while not compromising the quality of the public. So this is a guru mantra behind good governance or e-governance. We are having a you know a dedicated sessions on good governance, which can give us an idea that how there's a difference between you know the e-governance and good governance and how this good governance is going to be quite useful. Thank you very much. We have some thought-provoking sessions in coming days. Enjoy learning.